Hello everybody, this is Josh from Emergency Reporting on the development team and this is another training. Today we're going to be talking about incidents that deal with wildland fires and how we can integrate Google Earth with those incidents. So let's go into the incident file here. I already have a natural vegetation fire set up. This is a mock fire that was started by lightning on some land just outside of city limits. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we'll just run you through the basic info uh, series here for this fire. Just real basic, you probably already know how to do this. I clicked a 140 for the incident type, natural vegetation fire or other. And this is going to be important. I used the wildland fire module address instead of the, the regular fire mar module address. We click into there. And you can see I have some coordinates already plugged in to this page. I got these coordinates uh, either from my iPhone out in the field or a portable GPS out in the field, uh, whatever you use best to get uh, correct coordinates for where that fire origin was. This is the fire origin for the lightning strike of a ponderosa tree. So we click on Google Maps and this brings us uh, right into the area of where this fire started, just off the highway here, just to the north. Now where Google Earth really starts to make a difference in how we can uh, use it to our advantage, let's go into Wildland Fire 2 here. And what I have filled out here is some weather information. I got this weather information from Google Earth. So we go back to Google Earth here. And I found online uh, the Wildland Fire Assessment System. And you can uh, find this online. Uh, through the U.S. Oops, go up here. Through the uh, U.S. Forest Service, and they have a KML file that you can download for your Google Earth. And so I downloaded that, and I have it as a KML file. And what that shows is local weather stations uh, for the area around my fire. So the closest one was a White Cloud weather station, it's just up the road, just up the way there and I um, was able to get most of the weather information for when that fire started uh, back for this page. I even got the weather station ID. Um, this was the, the weather that was in progress. Uh, shifting winds, the wind speed, the air temperature, the relative hu humidity, the fuel moisture, and even the fire danger rating. So you go back to Google Earth, and at the time of the fire when it started, I had a moderate fire danger rating. So Google Earth integration, again, this worked really good uh, for this weather information page. And there's another page, the Wildland Fire 3 page, where Google Earth comes in as a handy tool, where the fire uh, originated on and how much acreage, uh, the percentage of total acres burned for each ownership type go back to Google Earth and again online I was able to find some KML files uh, for a particular area of property property paying lands so where the fire originated on let's go ahead and get rid of the sidebar there is the file is Nevada County Consolidated Fire District so the fire fell on fire district lands it looks like it was just outside of the Tahoe National Forest or uh, Forest Service lands. You can also uh, walk the fire perimeter and upload that fire perimeter to your Google Earth and you could see possibly how much the fire burned on Forest Service land or if it burned just all on state land. For this particular uh, training fire, 100% of it was on tax paying land and 0% of it was on federal land for just the one acre that burned. Again, all this information could be rounded up by exporting your incident for Google Earth, click on that, and it opens it right up in Google Earth. I hope you've enjoyed this training. And again, Google Earth is a great tool to have with your department, especially if you wanted to export 
all of your instance, you can see where all of your instance, what kind of land uh, those originated on, or the majority of calls that you want on. This is Josh with Emergency Reporting, and until next time, have a great summer.